previously on the Adventure Zone. If the object of value that the three of you are trying to claim is somewhere on this train, then I have reason to believe that the Rockport Slayer is somewhere on the train, too. You see a shadow through the frosted glass uh, of the the sleeper car uh, breeze past. You see a large pool of blood uh, on the outside of the closed door. This body is wearing robes. It has (gasps) been beheaded. Both of its hands are missing. It has a shimmering rainbow. (gasps) No! No, we never appreciated it while he was alive! The cut through the neck is very clean. You hear a deafening roar come from that room. Uh, the last time I saw Jenkins was, it was just a few minutes before I found him. He, he came up and did a drink service up here. You hear the engineer's voice come from a small cone above the door. Jenkins was a dedicated employee of the... Uh, now he's just a, a, dead, a employee. dead employee. I pick up the nodule. It's a little sticky. I put it in my ear. I love you too, Scuttle Buddy. <laughs> Put on your thinking caps, dumb shoes. It's time to solve a murder in the Adventure Zone. Three of you are stacked up, SWAT team style, on the door to the cargo car. car Wait, with... like on each other's shoulders? No, I mean, there's no like you're not sneaking into an R-rated movie. You're about to. You're about <laughs> to. Slice... Are we little rascaling uh, it? Uh, 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 no, you're about to slice the pie with Angus, who has his uh, his hand crossbow out. Uh, he's got his uh, back up uh, uh, to the wall against the door with the hand on the door, ready to go in. Um, before you all can breach, Angus turns to the three of you and says, uh, Now listen, if we find the culprit in this room, you have to promise me that you'll help me apprehend him. Don't kill him or her, whoever it is. Ooh, ooh that's a big ass. Uh, we really want to kill him. I'm yeah, sweet. we only know like two things. Jumping away from fire and killing are the only two things we're really good at. Not yeah. all have your weapons, though, so it, it would That's come true. down to fisticuffs. Oh. Beat a man to death with your bare hands. I've found that not killing is pretty easy. I go long stretch at long periods of time without killing anybody. <laughs> Keeping the demons at bay. <laughs> hey, listen, we all have droughts, kid. Don't feel bad. <laughs> uh, he says, okay. Cold streaks. Breaching in three, two, Wait. one. Wait. What, what? Yep. Angus. Yeah. Check your book. Okay. He pulls out the book of interception that he used to discover your true identities and cracks it open. And says, uh, what am I looking for here? Is there anything since just before we heard the scream that alerted us to the Jenkins murder or anything after? Any information we should have before we move forward. He flips through the book really quickly. This is not a great time for it. We're about to do some action-packed SWAT shit, but no, I don't I don't see any messages in here, okay. he says. Uh, can I breach? Yeah. Can I breach? Yeah. Can Excuse I breach, me. please? Are you all trained for SWAT hand signals? And no. you know about slicing the pie? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've three, had pie. Three, two, one, breach. And he uh, slides the door Slices open. Pie. Can you paint a word picture of how awesome it looks as we breach through? Yeah, you all, the four of you uh, slice the pie in uh, opposing diagonals into the room. Uh, Angus with his weapon drawn. Taco's got his umbrella, which is a little bit less imposing. Uh, Merle and Magnus, you are unarmed. Uh, but you move into the room. Uh, a flock of dugs, f- doves fly in. A flock, a of, flock dugs. of dugs. <laughs> Not dugs. Doug, 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 Doug. A flock of dugs fly in behind you and then vanish. Um, and it's totally sick. Uh, the only problem is that there is nobody in the cargo car. It's oh, it's man. completely Except a bunch of dogs now. There's a few dogs. No, there are no dogs. Uh, the only thing in the cargo car is the crypt safe, which is uh, firmly built into the floor of the room. Now, 
uh, the three of you, uh, as you move into the room, actually feel uh, nauseous for uh, a, a brief moment. Uh, but that quickly subsides. Uh, and one other curious thing happens as you move into the room. Uh, Merle... You, uh, up to this point, have been able to sort of overhear the awkward, forced conversation happening between uh, Jess and Graham in the passenger right. car in the front of the train, thanks to Over your, my scuttle buddy. your scuttle buddy earpiece. Yeah. As soon as you move into this room, that earpiece just shorts out. You, you, you are not hearing anything anymore as, as soon as you move into the room. Um, and Griffin. Angus starts uh, overturning the room looking for clues. Yes, Justin? Can I roll a perception check to see if I notice anything awry about the safe? Uh, yeah, you're you're doing an investigation check uh, yes. on the safe to see if anything's wrong with it. Yeah. Uh, I got a 19 plus zero. So yeah, just a, a 19. Just a 19. Uh, no, the the crypt safe seems totally intact. There's uh, it doesn't seem like it has been. Uh, breached or assaulted in any way? It's, it's locked still. Still locked up. Yeah. Did we try um, the handle? Because sometimes you like assume it's locked, and then you like try the handle, and it opens. You're like, oh. yeah. And so, sometimes the crypt safe does the thing where it unlocks the crypt safe right when you try to pop that handle open, and yeah. it's like, God, just wait for a second. Well, I'll go in, then you go. Like jiggling the toilet handle, right? just like jiggling exactly. the toilet handle. And sometimes you gotcha. poop on the crypt safe. Griffin, can I roll to see if I figure out what's going on? Yeah. Just what role would general? that be? Um. I, I have a plus eight to figuring shit out. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was only a seven, so that's only a fifteen. To no, you have no I, you have no idea. Use your brain, not your dice. But so I, that's, that's not how D and D works. I was actually thinking about that this past week. Like, if I was because I'm I'm cosplaying Taco <laughs> as a, currently. Are you are you as, are you wearing a I'm robe? Currently cosplaying Taco as a stupid man. That may change. I, he's kind of been going back and forth. But does it, like, D&D, like, meta D&D, like, should I be able to figure, like, is that fair if I figure something out? Because that doesn't necessarily make sense in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've always pictured Taco as more aloof than ignorant. He so, knows so, more than he lets on. Yeah, yeah but you're not answering the essential question here. If, if any of you playing. can crack this open, don't fucking sit on the answer. I've, I've what? Uh, just if you if you know the answer. No, I don't. I I I don't think I can crack it open. He's trying to ask if Justin can if figure Justin it out. Justin figure. I'm not saying like. Yeah, if if Justin figures it out, let it rip, baby. A, a, a one a single intelligence point orc. Like, should he be able to figure? Like, sh does it make sense if I were to figure something out? Like for that orc to be able to to guess it in D and D? Like, does that make sense? Well, you'd have to make like nineteen wrong guesses first. Shouldn't I be rolling to say, see if I figure it out? Is what I'm saying. No. <laughs> okay. We're just talking. So we're just talking. This is just friends talking right now. This is interesting. You know, this this um counters sort of what I was thinking because you know Jenkins' hands were missing, right? And I what I was thinking was that. This the rule of the safe is that you have to uh, have the employee of uh, the Rockport Express have to have their hands on the safe for an hour, and his hands were missing. So I I thought what I had thought was maybe someone had taken his hands so they could put them on the safe, uh, but there are no hands on the safe. Angus uh, looks up from he's dusting for prints on the safe and he looks up at you and he says yes i had the same suspicion a while ago of the effect of a really long <laughs> way like to a, catch up like basically from the start i had that suspicion uh, yeah yeah right the only issue is that it's not just any employee it has to be the engineer of the train who who's locked away in the engine car how do you As, open the engine car you don't the engineer's the only one that can get in there unless you have the wand unless you have the wand jenkins is wand right Jenkins' wand would let you go into any area, so that would be the only way. If it was you're your throwing, pleasure chamber, you're throwing a lot of spaghetti at the wall. I think there's. I think <laughs> oh, there's. Sorry, we're trying to just like piece this out, right? He said, uh, "I I noticed something very suspicious about this room, uh, and I'm wondering if you can help me uh, uh, confirm my suspicion." Uh, can one Is of this you the try point when the lightning flashes and when the lights come back up? He's got like an arrow in his heart. <laughs> Can I know who the killer is. <laughs> <laughs> Can one of you try and open the rear door, the caboose door, for the train, please? I will go I in the it. caboose. 
I already do it. I'm doing it right now. Okay. Uh, you, you are trying to open up the very rear door of the train, which just leads out of I, the train. I do it and it pops right open. It does not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I imagined it popping open. It does not. In fact, it seems like it has been fused shut somehow. I want to roll the punch open the door. Okay. Yeah, my whole day is about the door now. Okay, 19. So that's a 23. Versus okay. the door. You punch this very, very, very sturdy iron door, and it does n- nothing. It doesn't even make a sound. I do one d four. You don't do push. any damage. I do, I do, <laughs> but it says I push it, and I want to push it back and open. It pushes it. you back. In my country. <laughs> <laughs> if it's fused, then we can't unlock it. Well, thank you, Dad. Yes, but I wanted to Just, punch a door. I got angry. I know. I know, I know. Uh, can I, uh, I want to cast Detect Magic. Okay. Uh, you cast Detect Magic, and <laughs> ding, 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 ding. your, <laughs> norm, normally when you cast this spell, you can get sort of a, a, an idea of the magical items in the room. You can see sort of faint glowing traces around the magical items in the room. You cast this spell, and your vision just goes white just goes blinding white as if like everything is glowing every everything around you is glowing bad news compadres this place is magic as hell <laughs> uh you're also picking up faint hints of the only spell that you can sort of detect is the spell ghost sound uh which can sort of produce a a sound if uh to to anybody who is nearby uh the sound is of the caster's choosing it, it, can we can we see anything out the windows of the train? There's no windows. I'd like to cast locate object. Okay. On what? Uh, the magic wand of the uh, transporting closet. Okay, interesting. And then if it's within a thousand feet of me, if it's in motion, I'll know the direction of the motion. Okay. This the 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 rod. Uh, that opens up the ports or the pleasure chambers uh, that you are trying to detect, e- you can't pick it up, meaning it is not within 1,000 feet of you. Okay, I have a theory. This is Travis, not Magnus. I think the ghost sound that we're hearing is the sound like to make it seem like the train is moving. And where we are, we've been transported to a fake location that is not the actual crypt safe on the train. Angus says, uh, if that's correct, then this is a very unsafe room for us to be in. And I, I recommend that we move back to the dining car. I agree. Let's do that. So, Taco, usually when we retreat, you lead the force. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> peace. Peace and carrots, you guys. I'm out. <laughs> uh, the- I'm already out. Look at me. I'm down. Look at I'm the back of me. I'm back of the car. already there. The, f- <laughs> the back of the back of the other car. I'm gone. Uh, the f- I'm gone. The, the four of you are in the dining car now. Uh, Angus has summoned Jess and Graham to the dining car to uh, to fucking crack this thing wide open. That's what he says. It's time to fucking crack this thing wide open. <laughs> crack when we like went back, night. when we went back through that door, did we get a sense of nausea again? You did. Yeah. Uh, as you as you cross through the threshold of the door. Uh, you you very briefly feel uh, dizzy and nauseous, uh, but then uh, uh, as you spend more time on that side of the door, you it subsides and you're fine. And when we look back through the open door, we see the the crypt and everything else. Yep, it's it it, it you see the room you were just in. Okay. Uh, so you move into the dining car, uh, and Angus begins. His uh, speech. Uh, he actually turns to you guys and says, uh, "Do you guys, uh, do you guys want to take a stab at this first? I've done this a lot, and it's really exhilarating. And I'd love, uh, I'd love for one of you to share this, you know, parlor scene experience. If, uh, if we have any takers." Okay, so let me think. <laughs> I mean, I've already gotten everybody sort of like horny for the solution. Well, yes, thank you. <laughs> Pe- I got back off. That's the secret. Peeking back off. So obviously somebody has used the transportation closet 
to take the magic wand somewhere because if it's not within no, a somebody, thousand, no, 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 somebody no, no, has no, no. used we the wand somewhere. Somebody has used uh, the wand on we the door to else. that crypt yeah. so that we can't actually access the actual room where the crypt is because they are using Jenkins hands on the crypt. But now we can't access the actual crypt. Instead, when we walk through the door, we're in a like kind of Ocean's Eleven fake vault location. Angus says, uh, that's exactly right. It would confirm my suspicion. Uh, watch this. He walks into the, uh, walks right back into the cargo car with the crypt safe. Uh, and there's a small scrap of paper, a ticket stub lying on the floor. And he crinkles it up into a ball and throws it at the door. And it seems to just sort of hit an invisible barrier at the door frame and fall to the ground. And he walks back through and says, uh, you can't take an item from one of those pleasure rooms out of the pleasure room. So that room is almost certainly a fake. Good detective work. Uh, whatever your name is. <laughs> it's, it's Magnus, but that's not important right now. Let's, so whoever... It usually is. <laughs> Angus says, uh, let's, let's talk about the murder itself. I want to hear what you guys found about the method of the murder. How, how this murder was executed. What, what was, uh, the cause of death for Jenkins? Um, beheading? Beheading? Yeah, that be burning? No, the behead. I mean, that's that one's pretty obvious. If you guys are having trouble, a thing can't live without a head. You guys are like keyed <laughs> Listen, into that. Listen, we didn't get CSI out on it. We weren't able to check lividity and time of death and shit. <laughs> we saw that he didn't have a head, and there was blood everywhere. That's the best we can do. Uh, what did you notice? Anything else strange about the scene of the crime? His hands were cut off, and it was two different cuts. Yes, exactly. What could have possibly, let's, let's identify, first of all, what could have possibly caused the killing blow? What could have possibly beheaded? It was just his beheading axe. Well. No. The crab thing. You said it was completely clean? It was a totally clean cut, which would, uh. Is it possible that, that using that transportation magic, the body was transported differently from the head? I think you're close. It couldn't have been the axe, because the axe is soul-bound to Jess, and Jess has an alibi because she was in the room with Graham. If the Sm- head- Also, a, a, a weapon of that size would have made a, a tremendous noise, and it would have alerted everybody on the train that the murder was taking place. If the head was in the pleasure room, or in an alternate room, and then the magic was shut off, would that have done it? I think that's exactly it, and we have a clue that can confirm that. Remember, when we first came to the scene of the crime, there was blood on the outside of the door as well, which makes me think that they turned up a port in that door, stuck poor Jenkins' head through, and then shut off the port. And because the door would have still been open, that would explain the blood on the other side of the door. That's why you can't find the head. There was no sign of a struggle or sound of a struggle in that room, which makes it simple to deduce that the victim was asleep when they were killed. But why why the hands? That's the problem I keep coming The hands back are to. for the safe. I think that's entirely possible, although again, Jenkins hands wouldn't open the safe. It wasn't Jenkins hands. What are you saying? <gasps> I'm s- Oh my god. It was the engineer. What about Okay, but wait. Jenkins I, is I'm, the assassin. Jenkins killed the Okay, listen. Okay. Listen. <laughs> I have a moment of lucidity, and I don't want to waste it. Jenkins. <laughs> Jenkins killed the engineer, took the head so the body couldn't be identified, switched clothes with him, took the hands off the body, swapped the body with his clothes, and then opened the pleasure chamber into the engineer's room so he could kill him there. Right? So that's how he got in the engineer's room with with his wand, with his magical closet. And then burn up the body to prevent the body further to prevent investigation. Further investigation. I think you're close. I think that, that definitely he destroyed the body with the with the fiery crab to keep us from figuring out that it wasn't Jenkins. I think it, a much simpler solution... By the way, classic Jenkins to use a oh, crab. Oh, no, classic. Use a spell classic slot. Jenkins. Just burn one spell slot, Jenkins. Uh, come if on. We're, if we're 100% accurate on this, I think we need to be a lot more 
uh, respectful of Jenkins' magical potency. <laughs> nah, Jenkins I will is sooner a real die. Weird. I think it, a much easier method for him to access the engine car is when he took a drink service in there. Uh, oh, well, I, I liked mine better, but that's fine. Well, I'm glad you're contributing, Angus. I'm also glad the engineer is drinking. He's still in there. Because when we talked to the engineer, the engineer answered. The engineer answered through the audio device above the door, which could have easily just been ghost trick. It could be a ghost sound. It could be any number of spells. Cool. So where is oh. Jenkins now? This is a very curious, curious question. Remember when we were talking in my sleeper car yeah. about, I, and I revealed my true identity and you guys revealed your true identities? Yeah, we all grew closer as friends. And, and Jess says, what are you talking about? Uh, and Angus says, oh, I'm a, the world's greatest detective. Anyway, um, <laughs> You remember, before the murder, before any of this even happened, we were interrupted by the sound of somebody moving past the sleeper car towards the back of the car. If Jess and Graham were in the front of the car, the engineer was already dead. Who we'll call was him the, engineer. If the if He had a name, and it was uh, Hud Hudson. Hudson. Remember all those great Hudson, Hudson Hawk. Remember all those great Hudson Hawk goofs? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget them. If Hudson was already killed, and Jess and Graham were in the front of the car, and the four of us were in my sleeper car, who was that moving towards the back of the car, and where are they? J is it Jenkins? Yeah, I mean, yes. So Jenkins <laughs> is in the actual final car. Jenkins is in the real with the real crypt in All right. the real room. I point at Jez, and I say, some of that soul-bound axe, we're going to hack our way through a wall. Uh, she says, uh, I, uh, I'm not going to break my axe trying to chop through a train. It's a soul-bound magical axe, you coward. Yeah, but soul-bound shit can, like, break, and then I'll have this uh, shitty... Soul-bound shit can break. I'll have I'm this scared. shitty... I'll have this shitty broken axe soul-bound to me, and I know this, the D soul-binding procedure is really painful, so I'm not so, gonna, not going to go through wait, that. So he went in the engineer's car for drink service, killed the engineer, used the wand to open up a port from the engineer's car to the safe room, right? To the crypt. No, used it to open it up to the dining car thing so he could decapitate the body and do all that stuff. It's a, what, what I'm finding curious, Angus says, is why he didn't just kill the engineer in the engine car, cut off his hands in the engine car, and take his hands to the crib before to to the cargo car before because he, he had to alleviate suspicion from Jenkins. I think that's right. He had to. Whenever this job is done, he doesn't want anybody looking for him, and it's a lot easier to escape and and start a new life as a corpse than as a criminal. Well, it's hard to I start a new life as a corpse. I think. Because you're I, dead. I, I have a you theory. Can't get a, you can't get around. You can't get out. I hadn't a lot. stopped you, eye zombie. I mean, that's I have true. a theory. I have a theory for how the corpse found its way into the space between the passenger and the sleeper cars. Well, somebody probably helped it because it's a corpse. I was just saying, like, when you're a corpse, you can't. Let's hear your theory, little man. Does anybody else want to take a stab at it? Uh, boy, we've, well, we've had such a good hit rate so far. <laughs> Maybe the, the weird crab carried it on its back. <laughs> it was uh, on the drink cart. In the drink cart, Angus says. Eureka! Bazin Shut up! Bazinga. You are you do that answer, Angus. I don't need. I don't need your pity. No, I'm just. I'm very proud of the three of you. You've been much more competent than anybody on earth would have ever thought. Oh, well, thank well, you. Well, well, get to know us. Yeah, we, we, we blew up a whole city once. When I'm, uh, he uh, he walks over to the three of you and starts whispering. What I don't understand is if Jenkins was also the killer of Lehman Kessler. How does he know about this item that I can't hear and apparently nobody seems to know about except the three of you? Is he a member of the Bureau of Balance? Is he a... You just stacked oh, that, me, brother. <laughs> that's not for you. <clears throat> okay. I'm I'm asking my, my compatriots. Well, um... Could we, uh... Could we use the... the <clears throat> oh, oh, you know who we need. Push a button. You're on a train underground. There's no response. She can find us. <laughs> She's what's she gonna? How's she gonna do that? Magic, Griffin. How do dragons exist? Just make it happen, DM. 
Uh, no, it does not happen. You, you guys are on your own. No, no Deus Ex Machina. He's got to be a he's got to be a member of the bureau. It's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, Angus says uh, the really tricky part is how we're going to be able to get to Jenkins before we arrive in Neverwinter. He points at Graham. Graham, how long do we have until we arrive? And uh, Graham pulls out a uh, uh, stopwatch from his uh, pocket or a pocket watch. Not a his stop. juicy robe. He reaches into his juicy robe and pulls out a pocket watch, uh, and uh, pops it open and looks at it. And he says, uh, "About uh, twenty-five minutes." And uh, Angus says, "We don't have very long." No, about uh, twenty-five minutes. Yeah, we we just heard him. Okay. I would like to. May I cast locate object again? Yeah. I cast locate object again on the same rod. Yep. Uh, this time you get a ping towards the back of the train in the cargo car. So it confirms. Yeah. I have a question for Boy Detective. Yeah, shoot. So the rule of you can't bring items back from the pleasure chamber. Yeah. What happens if we could successfully bring an item back? You can't. Would it, dis- would it disrupt the magic? It wouldn't do anything to the magic. It just wouldn't go through. How do we disrupt the magic? Either by stopping the caster from from channeling the spell or destroying the item that's channeling the spell. <laughs> Killing. <laughs> well, but we got to get to him first. Oh, yeah. We do. Wait, 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 wait. Are there windows on the, 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 the crypt car? There are no windows in the crypt car. There's only the caboose door. Son of a bitch. Is the wall punchable? Are there windows on the car next to it? Uh, there's a door uh, before the dining car. Yes, but you were well, okay. saying there's a door at the back of the cargo car. And in the fake train, it's fused shut. Right. I suspect that's because pleasure chambers can only have one entrance. So if we were able to get around to that door from right. the outside Here- of the car... How sturdy are the walls of the train? It's a train, so pretty sturdy. <laughs> Fairly sturdy, right? Okay. I would say I would say they're about, uh, in terms of sturdiness, they're about a train level, which is to say, train <laughs> level sturdy. pretty sturdy, in a locomotive sense. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm. Here's my. Let me let me put forth the theory I'm thinking about. What if we were to go back into the dining car, put mag? I I cast levitate on Magnus, put him out a window. And he goes and knocks out the side of the cargo car. Or the door. Or all the way to the back and come through the... That's what I'm saying. Or go through the back of the caboose. Either way, if I levitate him and put him out the back of the train, then he could get around to the back or the side if I look for another way in. And then he'd have to take down Jenkins on his own? That seems pretty dangerous. Well, no. All he has to do, really, is distract Jenkins long enough to bring down the port. We have the far stone, right? So we can use the stone to keep in contact. And as soon as he brings the port down, we can go in and take Jenkins to Brown Town. Here's what we're going to do. Can, and here's the good news. The best news is there's no way he's going to use any spells on us. We know how <laughs> finicky he is about conserving his slot. Again, I have to stress this. It, I think his, his uh, incompetence may have been a ruse. And if you try to step to him, you may get got. Hey, Angus, you're the world's smartest kid. Have you ever heard of a man named Magic Brian? <laughs> I can't, you just staticked out for me. Exactly. exactly. Let me make let me make one addendum to your plan here, uh, uh, Taco. Le- okay. Cast levitate specifically on my magic jumping boots, so that okay, way great. I'm not like at like the mercy of being levitated and moving around. Oh, I love it. It's delectable. Let's do it. Uh, Magnus is so on board with this plan. Okay. And that was Magnus speaking. That was not Travis speaking. That was Magnus speaking in third person. Oh, gotta get character voices. Magnus um, is on board with this plan. Ha, ha, ha. Just that, aren't, that don't sound like death and sadness mm-hmm. mixed together in a pudding. I think maybe Magnus has a Spanish accent. Oh, God. No, he doesn't. Oh, good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Excellent. And I, I think I've been doing it up to this point. Yeah, it's been flawless. Thank you. <laughs> I Before we do this plan... Wait, okay. How many spell slots do you have, Old Bean? Of what? Your, 
of your you've already burned two on locate object. Have you not? What about your zones of truth? That was last adventure. No, no you're, man, you I think you might rested. be. I think you are fresh out of magic, my dude. You're magicked out. I'm sorry. Plus, I have to we've do the talked DM about this you, plan but... eight ways to Sunday. Let's just do it. Let's just get get busy. Get busy living or get busy. You will die. You're gonna die. Everybody, it's your dungeon master and your best friend Griffin McRoy. Thank you all for listening to episode 15 of the Adventure Zone. I hope you enjoyed the unraveling of the mystery. I saw a bunch of folks online get some of the parts of it right. I don't know that I ever saw anybody completely nail it. Um, I guess it was a little bit convoluted looking back on it, but aren't all the best mysteries almost completely incomprehensible? No. This episode of The Adventure Zone is sponsored by NatureBox. NatureBox is your official online source for delicious, healthy snacks. All their snacks are made with zero artificial flavors, colors or sweeteners, zero grams trans fats, and no high fructose corn syrup. You can grab mini Belgian waffles, strawberry lemonade fruit stars, and sweet and salty nut medley. I hadn't read this. I'm reading this now, and I hadn't read it, and these are new, and I'm very, very excited about the the potential of mini Belgian waffles. Of course. They're perfect. Make them smaller. Of course. Right now, if you go to naturebox.com slash adventure, you can get a free trial box of their favorite snacks. If you're gathered around the table playing D&D, maybe you're playing it for the first time. Maybe we inspired you. Maybe the wind beneath your wings. That's fine, but we can't be the crunch in your mouth. Nature Box can be that for you, though. Go to naturebox.com slash adventure. Get your free box of trial snacks. I have a personal message here for Ben, and it's from Grace. And Grace says to Ben, happy anniversary, sweet man. Or maybe I put the emphasis on the wrong word there. Let me try again. Happy anniversary, sweet man. That didn't make sense. Thank you for putting up with my lack of competition in strategy games, inability to understand song lyrics, and impromptu dance parties. I'm looking forward to what the next few years will bring. My wheat is your wheat. Uh, That's very sweet. I don't know if that's a Catan reference at the end. We've been talking about doing an all Catan podcast where instead of playing Dungeons and Dragons, it's just Catan. So every episode's going to be really, really similar. A lot of sheep slinging. Um, But... Happy anniversary, you sweet, sweet man. Thank you all for listening to and sharing the Adventure Zone. Uh, Remember, whenever we start a new chapter and introduce some new characters into the story, we pull from uh, Twitter mentions using the hashtag TheZoneCast uh, to pick up on some names like Jenkins and Angus McDonald and uh, all kinds of folks. Those are all named after people on Twitter. Just use the hashtag TheZoneCast and talk about the show, and you may end up in the game. If you haven't uh, already listened to the other shows on the Maximum Fun Network, you should go give them a swing. Go give them a try. I guarantee you will find at least six shows on the network that you really enjoy. Maybe it's going to be rendered. Maybe it's going to be Stop Podcasting Yourself. Maybe it's going to be Judge John Hodgman. Maybe it's going to be Throwing Shade. I don't know. I don't live in your brain, and I don't know your comedy preferences. But go to MaximumFun.org and uh, just have a poke around. It's all free, and you're going to love it. That's all the uh, advertisements I have for this week. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode. Uh, Let's get back into it for the second half of this episode, which I will title... The part with the idiotic train stunt. Uh, The next episode is going to go up on June 4th. We already recorded it, and it turned out pretty great. I'm really excited about that one. So June 4th will be the next one. Uh, So I will see you all then. You are all gathered around a table in the dining car. Uh, where Graham has unfurled a map of the train route. And he is <laughs> I thought pointing, you were going to say of the train, and it was just a straight line. Uh, and he has pointed out one part of the route, and he says, uh, shouldn't there be some really cool music playing in the background, like 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 the Ocean's yeah, Eleven? I'm sure. There's a brief gap between the teeth where we will have a They roughly- call it the Letterman Gap. He says, uh, yes, it goes over, it's, it, it's, it's a suspended rail line over a, a, a lush basin, mm-hmm. over it called Letterman's Basin, and uh, at the speed that the train's moving now, you'll have about 90 seconds exposed. Okay. Uh, where, you, where we won't be inside the mountain, and that's going to be your best opportunity to get around. You'll have to move around two cars, 
You'll have to move around the dining car and get to the, the back of the cargo car if you want to pull this off. He says, are you sure you want to go solo on this yeah. on this journey? Yeah. By any chance, is Magnus a Chinese acrobat? Uh, let me look. Let me look at my character sheet. Oh, look. Says it right there. <laughs> Chinese a Span- acrobat. A sure Chinese enough. acrobat with a perfect Spanish accent. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> He's the great. All right. I'm ready to go. Fire He's the great American uh, melting pot. Uh, uh, Graham hands you a small bean. <laughs> is, surpri- is it a magic bean? Are you surprised? Uh, Graham says, uh, when I heard you talking about your plan, I thought that maybe I could help out by alchemizing this delicious bean for you. Uh, if, you pop, if you pop this into your mouth, you'll become extremely heavy. So uh, don't use it if you're on the side of the train, but if it looks like you're, you know, something, something's bad about to happen, you're about to go flying off the train, if you take this, you might be able to sort of drop yourself back onto it. Uh, but, but just hold on to it. Okay. Uh, Graham, master of foreshadowing. Uh, and uh, he pops open the, uh, the dining car door, and uh, it's pitch black. You're still inside the mountain. Uh, Graham says, uh, we'll be outside in 10 seconds. Uh, do you have anything you want to say to your teammates? Any last words? Don't Wait, touch I my stuff. To levit- I need to cast levitate. Your shit isn't levitating yet. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And I need to cast jack shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. Max You're right. Boy. Stop, stop zone truthing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> have, have a little bit of faith in humanity. Are you braced there, Mario? You ready to go? <laughs> it's, yes. All right, boy, who could fly? And you're levitating. <laughs> okay, I, I was waiting for a sound effect. Yeah, there is no sound effect for levitate. No, Dad's just whistling. I don't know. There is no sound effect for levitation. Everybody is the old first thing you learn in wizard school. Okay. Uh, He's just doing weird 1940s foley work for like a tornado <laughs> or something. Magnus, you are uh, suddenly, you, you have this weird sort of sensation. It takes you a while to sort of get used to staying upright with just your boots levitating and, mm-hmm. and nothing else going. Uh, but you're kind of uh, Marty McFly in yes. uh, Back to the Future Part Two. Yes, I am, Griffin. Just, just sort of uh, hovering off the ground, just sort of waving your arms in the air to try and stay upright. Uh, and as you are figuring out this balancing act, uh, the the all of you are blinded as the train uh, exits the uh, the mountain, and you see uh, a, a rickety sort of uh, suspended rail bridge. Uh, underneath you, and then about 150 feet below, uh, you see a lush forested area. And Graham says, "Go." I get re- he- I get real caught up by the view and spend about two minutes looking at it. <laughs> okay, you're back inside the mountain. You can oh no! No, I go out the window. Okay, you go. Uh, well, it's a door. I go out the door. Uh, okay, Graham clicks down a, a button on his uh, pocket watch and uh, yells, "Go!" So what are you what are you what are you doing? Explain to me what's what you're doing. Uh, that's such a good question. Could you describe to me what I'm looking at first? This is in zero time. This is like bullet time. Okay, you're in bullet time. There's there's two train cars that you have to get past. The dining car and the cargo car. Mm-hmm. That's that's what you are looking at. The uh dining car has uh, uh, a a few small windows on it. Uh, that maybe you could use as hand grips. Yeah. But if if you are looking for me to tell you how you are about to pull off this incredible acrobatic feat, uh, I that's not my job. I just created the situation. Well, I have one risky idea, and that, that is good. I don't have to do anything but let go and then grab on again, because the Ooh. train's moving. Oh. It's just a matter of timing. That if I can grab, you know, the back of the train, then I don't have to do shit. But that would require wow. probably an immense dexterity roll. Yeah. And if you fail this, I'll kill you. I'll, <laughs> I'll, you, Wait, will you, you, will, you will You will not hesitate. Listen, listen baby, risk, risk and reward. If, okay, you, if you do I'm it, it'll be fucking my... rad. If you don't do it, I you'll die and you'll have to start a new character. I'm gonna. Can I retcon that I've tied my rope off to something in the car? What have you tied it off to? I don't know. One of the tables in the dining car. Okay. 
Well, we could hold the other end of the rope. I don't well, trust you, like fuckers. a lot of work. What if, what if I get bored? <laughs> See? All right, so you've tied a rope to what? A, one of the tables in the dining car. Okay, and you've secured it around your waist? No, I'm just holding on to it, like I'm oh. rappelling down the side of the train. I'm uh, going to slacken my grip a little bit to slide down the rope. I'm okay, I see. Gauntlets. So the the rope is sort of like a a, a sh- it's like sideways rappelling, like a yeah. streamer coming off the train, uh, going going behind it, and you are just sort of slowly scooching your way down it. Correct. Okay, so you are sideways rappelling down the length of the train, uh, moving down past the dining car. Uh, the cargo car that you are now next to is uh kind of almost perfectly smooth, like a bullet. Uh, perfectly smooth like a butt you are successfully navigating the length of uh of the train uh and you make it uh past the cargo car uh to the caboose door there's like a small platform uh at the back of the door uh with uh you know a a small step uh going up to it off the back of the car Mm -hmm. um and standing on that platform is a giant brute of a monster, Excellent. Uh, skinless, made of meat. Uh, he is he is gargantuan, sort of uh, the Hulk size, uh, but he has a very very small hand, very small left hand uh, that smells very bad, a very <gasps> very stinky small left hand. Uh, and you stop to admire him as you are sideways, is that uh, the, repelling is down that the, the side conductor? of the train. Uh, and as you say that, is that the conductor? This uh, brutish monster rears back and punches you in the sternum. Okay. Ow. He rolls a 21. Well, yeah, then. <laughs> this is not going to be good. No, it's all right, yeah. And he hits you for 16 points of damage. And wow. As he clocks you, uh, you uh, uh, need to roll a dexterity saving throw to make sure you uh, don't let go of the rope. Well, I don't. Would that just trust me? I don't. Wouldn't that be a strength roll? That is. I rolled a nineteen. A nineteen. Okay, so you do manage to uh, get uh, to stay stay holding on to the rope, uh, but this punch sort of just like like you're on a tire swing. That's great. Pushes Have you we, backwards. Well, let uh, me ask you this, Groovy. Yeah. How far are we away from re-entering the tunnel? Uh, you can yell to Graham to try and. Get I mean, an I can't see it. Uh, you, you're you're about actually as you get uh, swung away from the train, uh, you see that you are about one third uh, of the way there. Okay, so like second wise, could you estimate? Uh, Sixty seconds. Cool. Okay, well, I, so now I'm just kind of like flying off the train, right? Uh, yeah, you are. You are no longer before the rope was sort of flush with the train's wall, and you had sort of perfect control uh, on it as you were rappelling down. Now you are just sort of holding on for dear life as this uh, rope sort of swings around. Uh, you're no longer like level with the train. You're like a bit above it now. Perfect. Um, I'm yeah. gonna wait 59 seconds. Okay. I- Listen, because this is going to be physics, and it's awesome. As we go into the tunnel, and the rope starts to compress back against the train, just before it gets to me, I take the bean and basically become a wrecking ball and smash into the brute at the back of the train. <laughs> Listen, don't give me the bean if you don't want me to use the bean. Okay, so you are holding onto the rope with one hand. Mm-hmm. So you are flying above the train. You are waiting... Uh, you have waited 59 seconds. The train has started to move back into the tunnel. As the uh, 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 dining car moves into the train, it uh, begins to pull the rope back in towards the train, and you pop this heaviness bean in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Okay, and from your position above the train, you get super duper heavy and begin to fall directly behind the train. The rope catches on the roof and you are going to make a really cool acrobatics check yes, if you're going to do this thing. Yeah. Because I should have just killed you on the side of a tunnel. <laughs> Sweet. 17. That's a 19. 
19. Okay. Uh, you come down on this thing hard. Uh, you, you manage to get him with like your curled up knees, sort of Tony Jaw style, uh, which, uh, hits him for, we'll say, you came in pretty hard and you're really heavy. So we'll say, uh, 2d8 damage. That's this one. That's 14. Uh, you knock this this meat monster uh, with uh, uh, the hand of the engineer through the door. You see him uh, collide with Jenkins, uh, who is bent over on the floor, digging through items that he has apparently pulled off of the crypt safe, which is uh, pulled out of the crypt safe, I should say, uh, which has been popped open. And there you see another meat monster uh, with another very small hand. Uh, with his hand firmly planted on the crypt safe. Can I uh, see tree splitter? Uh, you, rail splitter. Rail so splitter. Uh, I call him tree splitter. It's, uh, a, it's my pet name for him. You do. You see it on the ground behind uh, Jenkins on the, the, the ground close to the front door. Uh, and through that front door, you can actually see your party uh, in the dining car. Yeah, you knock this meat monster back into Jenkins... Uh, who is on the ground. He's holding a shitty metallic compass in his hand and sort of pouring over all of the items on the ground. When this meat monster collides with him, he uh, falls over. The silvery, uh, the, the silver rod that he was using to channel the ports uh, flies out of his grip. And, uh, and Merle and Taco, you can see this scene now through the door of the cargo car. He looks up at you with a start. And he goes, uh, what the fuck? Uh, and uh, we're going to get into combat, but I'm going to give you a surprise round on him since this was all very, very surprising. I want to spit out the bean and jump across the room. Okay. Uh, so that you way I can be on the same side as my party and rail splitter. Okay. You spit out the bean, uh, making you float again uh, with your magic jumping boots. Uh, position yourself against a wall and just like sort of... It does be clear. Like I spit it back in my hand. I didn't just like spit it out. Yeah, because maybe you want to be maybe you want to be heavy again at some yeah. point. Uh, you you just sort of missile launch yourself across the room, uh, and you're going to punch Jenkins or what are you doing? <laughs> no, I just want to can I jump across the room, punch him, <laughs> some fly, or just give him the finger as I fly by? <laughs> okay, you fly by the as you float effortlessly through the room over the meat monster. Uh, you flip him the bird, and now you're on the other end of the room. Uh, and uh, that's going to do it for your surprise round. We need to roll initiative. Five. I rolled a nine. Thirteen. That's a good spread, guys. Now, Griffin, my question is, are Jess and Graham and Angus backing us up? And will you be playing three NPCs versus three NPCs? <laughs> Depends on how quickly you guys can all kill them. <laughs> okay. Uh, first in the order are the two meat monsters. Cool. Great. Uh, and the first one uh, is the one that you need in the chest, who stands up uh, and trudges his way over to uh, now, where... Now, isn't standing up a move action, Griffin? No. It takes half your, it takes half your move. Oh. Don't tell don't tell me the rules of Dungeons and Dragons, please. <laughs> uh, he stands up and uh, trudges over to you and uses his big fist, not his little stinky fist, mm. uh, to uh, just sort of overhead hammer strike you. And that's a 24. Jesus. Yeah, no, that's a hit. It's a solid hit. Uh, and that is 13 points of damage. Whew. All right. I'm in a bad way. Uh, and the other one takes his uh, tiny uh, hand off of the crypt safe, uh, trudges towards you, and uh, comes at you with sort of a, a, a chop from the side. Rolls a 19. I mean, yeah, that hits. Uh, that's 11 damage. Okay. <laughs> I'm down to one. Okay, that's it for the meat monsters. Uh, next in the order is Merle. Okay, so if he has one, I cannot cast Spare the Dying. That's a cantrip. Well, then, uh, I'm going to use my Warhammer on the, uh... You, oh, okay, so many things. You don't have the Warhammer. You're not in the room. Yep, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> 
I will move forward into the car. Okay. And cast Sacred Flame on the wounded meat monster. Okay. Uh, yeah, go for it. Oh, I have to roll. Uh, he rolled an 11 it's against your spellcasting modifier, which is higher than that. 1d8 radiant damage. Okay. Oh, man, you know, I really wish that when I was getting punched a bunch, I remembered that I had a bunch of skills I could use to avoid taking damage. Oh, maybe next time. Oh, punched a bunch. I like punched a bunch. Uh, okay, so that's five. Okay. Plus one for the holy symbol, right? Uh, for the extreme team Bible? Yes. Uh, and you're going to do bonus damage because these things are undead. Vulnerability uh, to a damage type means damage of that type is doubled against it. Uh, so you blast this thing with radiant light. What, what does that even mean? Uh, you've destroyed it. Okay, good. That's Yeah, good. Excellent. Uh, next, Yay me! Win! Uh, next in the order is Magnus. Great. You are standing in this room. Uh, you got one meat monster left. Uh, Jenkins has uh, stood up uh, and rolled poorly on his initiative, so he hasn't taken any actions. Uh, he says, how How did you... How <clears throat> It's going to take me a while to get back into Jenkins. I was so excited when he died that I wouldn't have to do <laughs> him anymore. And then he proved to be so popular. I know. How could you, how could you have possibly seen through my, my perfect crime? Because you're not a very good wizard. I'm the best wizard. You're a wiener. Any, you, you, I hate you all You're so... You're a wiener, Jason. I hate More you like all... Wankins. I hate you all so much. I'm going to call you Wankins from now on. My name is not Wankins. <laughs> Dinkins. How about Dinkins? Dinkins is pretty good. What about Jerkins? Dinkins. How about I'm Jerkins? Going, I'm going to kill everyone on this train, and then I'm going to bring you all back to life again, and then I'm going to kill you again. More like Junkins. <laughs> This is yeah, but that would take another spell slot. <laughs> um, next in the order is Magnus. I want to pick up Braille Splitter. How do I do that? You do it. Okay, I pick up Braille Splitter. Okay, but bend from the knees. Bend from the knees, not from the waist. And I want to pop the bean back in my mouth. Okay, you pop the bean back in your mouth. You're very heavy. How close am I to the um to the meat monster? The he's right. One? He's right up on you. He just punched you. Great. I want to swing my axe at his head two-handed. Okay. That is 22. 22. Okay. And then yes, sufficient. 1d10 plus 6. This is a d10. That is a 10. 16 damage. Okay, woof. He is bloodied. And now I want to step backwards. <laughs> Uh, but you're heavy. If you do that, you're going to take an opportunity attack. Well, I don't want that. No, who would? It's a big meat monster. But if I don't get away from him, I'll die. No, I'll still step back. Okay. It, it is important to me to get away from him. I have one point of damage. Okay, you're going to take an opportunity attack. Are you Are you ready for the opportunity attack? Let me brace myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, 18. Oh, man, it just hits. Okay. It's going to be more than one. Well, that's a, that's a Garen goddamn T. <laughs> I think the real takeaway here is this, this, this step back has betrayed a real lack of faith in my ability <laughs> to kill that monster. Uh, that's ten points of damage. Woof. Woof. Okay, hold on. <laughs> hmm, hold on. Mm. I guess when you fly solo, that happens yeah, sometimes. Maybe you should have let your boy taco. Yeah, maybe have Yeah, a that's team great coming from a cleric who bad. expended all of his spell slots to heal me doing weird shit earlier. Oh, well, you're the dead guy. Here's the zone of truth. You're dead. So I'm going to use parry, use reaction dice to reduce damage by the dice plus my dexterity. Okay. That is 8, plus my dexterity is 10. Your dexterity is 10? No, my dexterity is 2, but oh, plus my uh, dexterity is 10. Okay, so you do you get a counterattack? Uh, no, not with parry. I only get that with riposte when it's missed. Okay, uh, he brings his meaty fist uh, down on you, and you effortlessly, like the water, move around it. 
Uh, and now you can move. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back with the rest of my party. Okay, you're back there. Uh, next thing in order is Taco. I'm gonna cast Ray of Frost. I know it's boring on the um on the monster that's already taken some damage. Okay. Are you you're still outside of the train in the space between cars? Okay. Well, I came I came within thirty feet uh, of. Okay, he was right by the door, so you can you can perfect. shoot him through it. I'll just cast through it. Okay. Uh, twenty two. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. Nice. Okay, and then it does six damage. Uh, okay, cool. He is very, very bad off. Uh, next in the order is Jenkins, who uh, surveys the scene. Uh, he he drops his this compass he was using and his uh, uh, silvery port rod thing, uh, and he leverages his wand and points it at the meat monster. And he says, okay, I see I'm outnumbered and out-axed. Uh, I am a big enough man to admit defeat. So here is the deal I will make everybody on this train. Uh, he says, uh, this meat monster is equipped with one of Hudson's hands. I grew this monster out of Hudson's hand. Uh, and if he is destroyed like the other one you just killed, then the hand will be lost and we will have no way of getting back into the engine car to slow down the train before it arrives in Neverwinter in... He, uh, he looks at his, his pocket watch. Apparently everybody has those. He says, uh, in about 10 minutes. So, everybody is going to back off and shut the door to this car, leave me to find my treasure, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to stop this train in time. What do you say? Magnus turns to Taco and says, hey, do you think you could figure out that port wand thing? Absolutely not. Probably. <laughs> okay, cool. Probably. Good enough for me. We don't so need can- a hand. Jenkins says, uh, no takers, huh? No thanks, Papa. Go fuck yourself, Wankins. Go fuck, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What he said, but like, imagine me saying it too, but angrier. Like simultaneously, like a Greek chorus. He says, uh, well, okay. Uh, and he points his wand at the meat monster, and a bolt of fiery flame shoots out of it. Uh... And he rolled a two and uh, misses the meat monster by a country mile. <laughs> the worst. Uh, and uh, with that, it's back to the top of the order, uh, which is the meat monster, <laughs> which uh, trudges over to Jenkins, uh, picks him up by the throat, and throws him off the out of the uh, open caboose door. And Jenkins... <laughs> Rolls an eight on his dexterity saving throw, and you don't see Jenkins anymore. He is gone. He has been deposited out of the back of the train. You hear him go, "Smell you later." <laughs> I'll uh, then I guess I'll cast Sacred Flame again at the meat monster. Okay. Well, hold on. Wait a minute. Did we just lose the wand? No, he set it down. Okay. All right. Uh, the meat monster rolls a eight, which is not good enough. Yeah, six. Uh, six, so that's 12 damage. Uh, he is reduced to ash as well, and he floats out the back of the open car door. Finally free to go to heaven. Well, no, meat monsters don't go to heaven. <laughs> wow, Griffin. All meat monsters go All to heaven. Mo- that's my favorite Don Bluth movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Meat monsters go to heaven. That Burt Reynolds. And Don Bluth what is my talent. favorite Arrested Development character. Uh, let's stop there. <laughs> <laughs> On that solid goof. <laughs>
everyone. It's Griffin. Just popping in one more time before the end of the episode to thank NatureBox one more time. NatureBox is where you can order hundreds of great tasting, healthy snacks. Go to naturebox.com slash adventure to sign up for a free sampler box of great tasting, healthy snacks. Next episode's up on June 4th, so we'll see you then. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey everyone, we're the Flop House, one of the newest additions to the Maximum Fun Podcasting Network. I'm Dan McCoy. I'm Stuart Wellington. And I'm Elliot Kalin. What is the Flop House, you may very well ask? We watch a bad movie and then we talk about it. A bad movie podcast? Isn't that like every fifth podcast on the internet? I'd answer that by saying, one, we've been doing this show for over seven years, long before the entire premise of our show was a cliche, and two, shut up. Sick burn. I'd say that our show is more of a comedy podcast. A podcast about words that sound like other words. A podcast about me singing long, irritating songs like this one. A podcast about pitches for a Ziggy comic book movie. Or discussions about sex tarps. Yeah, I mean, mostly it's a show about three friends just hanging out. And talking about ding-dongs. That's mostly used to. Wait, what? So if you like any of those things, subscribe in iTunes today or visit MaximumFun.org to follow the show. The Flophouse! Woo!